Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So today I'm going to demonstrate something completely different. Um, I've never actually done it myself, but you know, I was looking at this this marsh scene. I think from a photo I took probably five-ish years ago. I think back in 2017. And it's a, uh, I'd say a pretty plain scene. Um, there's not a lot happening. It's fairly flat light. There is some sort of sense of shadow and light on these background trees, but on the whole, it's, it's fairly flat light, basically blues and greens. That's all that's in this scene. There is a nice little bit of shadow indicated up here in the sky. So what I wanted to do today is basically do some, some thumbnail little color studies. So different from the 20 minute color study, which um, is a little bit more of a kind of refined painting, even though it's only 20 minutes, those can often, um, you know, be put in frames and be shown or sold. So th the one that I did, which was that um, sort of the sun coming through the trees of winter with like the path going up, like I would feel comfortable framing that and, and putting it in like a small work show. These are really to work through some color combinations. So I'm going to demonstrate three different examples of it. So, and I probably won't change, you know, say the composition much because I actually like this composition. Um, you know, there's this nice kind of angle of these grasses coming in and then there's some water kind of peeking through. And then um, there's sort of this concavity of the background trees, which I like that. I think it's a fairly interesting sky shape. And then there's, you know, some nice little clouds peeking through. So. Compositionally, I, I don't want to really adjust it. It's really going to be more about um, finding some color, some color combinations that um, you know may may make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going I'm going to actually jump right in. I'll start here. So let me see. So if I'm going to say stay fairly true to the scene. I could come in put some shadow color back here in those trees could modify it with no surprise a little bit of violet and then maybe I want to just come in into the water. This is definitely a bit dark. Feels a bit dark. Say I'll use this color, which this could work. Then I can come in and, and I want to be careful too that I'm not making too many marks. That's not really the purpose of this. I'm not trying to, you know, get that degree of nuance. It's really about testing some color here. And then I can come in with some green. That green's a bit dark. So say in the background here, I want to you know, cool it off. And then in the foreground, I want to lighten it and even warm it a little bit. And sort of indicate some random grasses up here. And 
then up in the sky. Okay, I want to come in with that color. And then what I think would be nice, and I've done this, you know, done this before in some of these Mars scenes is you know, where a cloud looks just really, say, white, um, actually introduce, instead of just going pure white with it, let's say a little bit of pink. And then I could come back in. Just kind of clean up. The edge a little bit. And then maybe I want to get, you know, a little bit lighter color in those background trees. Nope, don't really like that color. Maybe I'll go with, I actually want it to be a little bit more, say, neutral back there. back, 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 back in the grasses. Actually thinking about an even lighter, cooler color that I could bring in there. And one way to do that would be, actually that's a bit, a bit warmer. Maybe I'll bring that up here. Going to, pardon my head, I'm going to grab a, a new pastel that is on the definitely on the cooler side. Cooler green. And then let me just see. And then I'm going to grab blue here. I just want to indicate that some of that water kind of peeks through. All right. So I think it's it's interesting. It reads. Maybe I want to bring in some of these grasses a little bit more. Okay. So I can now kind of recreate a border on it. And when the outer edge is really messy, this border becomes really clean, or uh, sorry, really important to kind of clean it up. So I like that. You now it's just a little, little study. So I'm going to do it again, but a little bit different this time. Say I want to go with a little bit more violet color. Sorry, that's my son jumping and running around upstairs. So violet, and then say I want to, I'm gonna push the water a little bit more violet. Maybe I want 
went to, and I'm just testing things out here. This is nothing has been tried before, pre-planned. I'm just sort of testing out, you know, color combinations. So this is a much warmer green. And then in comparison to that, Actually didn't feel too cool but maybe I will take say a color like this which definitely does feel cool Big old Diane Townsend. Okay. And I want to go lighter yet. Sorry for that. I think that's the water pump. indications of it here, a little indication of it here. And then in the background of those trees, maybe I want to go quite cool with it. I also want to reinforce Sorry, it's a little bit awkward for me because I'm trying to make sure my shoulder is not in the video so it sort of forces me to kind of put my body in an awkward position and then I'll go into the sky Tiny, tiny bit of pink that I used last time. And maybe I even, maybe I even peek that in here just a tiny bit. And because the sky is a little bit on the warmer end of the violet spectrum, I'm going to include some of that. What's fun about this, I'm just sort of realizing, I mean, it's, it's fun from a mark making perspective too, because every mark tells a lot of the story. Every mark says a lot in these little studies, these little thumbnails. So I'm gonna go in, clean up this outer edge. background trees and even though 
I do want that to be cool. Bring in and I want to make it go a little bit lighter too. So I could say, you know, take a green like this, a new pastel, you know, and just with a couple marks, go ahead and lighten that up. Okay. So there's two variations on this. Now what to do with the third one? Let me take a step back here. What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. What to do. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll send it more towards, I'm just actually checking, okay. Uh, maybe I'll push it more towards almost like, um, say like sunset colors. So I'll take, all right, that's my daughter's uh, shopping cart. And I'm not, you'll see too, I'm not necessarily adhering to, you know, dark to light. I'm basically just putting down what kind of is calling to me. And I'm not even following some of those sort of basic rules. And with the, you know, with a tiny little painting like this, it's totally fine. You know, I'm not going to, you know, make a mistake, you know, at, uh, with something like this that's going to be sort of heartbreaking. So I'm not really... Not really too worried about it. like that just like as an abstract of basically one two three four shapes that's kind of cool and even though it is a sunset you'll still see a little bit of cool effect in the background there careful that my shoulder doesn't get in the scene. I think that color went a bit light. So I could go back in. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I wanna get a little bit darker color, say, on the other underside of some of these grasses. I feel like I just need one more value shift.
Okay. And then I'm going to take that dark blue again. Kind of outline it. Get a nice border on it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a unique process. I've I've not done this before. I know some artists are, um, you know, big proponents of you know doing, you know, some some of these kind of color studies, and I do, but not where I'm kind of modifying the actual scene itself. Um, you know, where I'm just kind of planning out. The colors I'll use but I this is this is interesting I mean I I like the process of doing it um, you know it's something I could definitely see exploring a little bit but let's say I take now I think this process works best on a simple scene too like I I wouldn't take a super complex scene and try to completely you know adapt the color palette because there's just too much happening that it would be very very hard to do it in a sort of accurate way whereas with this you know it's a very simple scene i'm basically using you know four or five essentially four or five different colors you know maybe maybe you know at max like 10 colors um and i think you know it makes it easy when it's a simple scene to sort of adjust the color palette so, you know, when I look at those little thumbnails and say, okay, this one's obviously truest to reality. I think of the three, let me take a step back and just try to take them all in at once. Of the three, I think I might be most called to this one possibly. But I'm a sucker for sunsets, especially marsh sunsets. So, and then you know this one, that almost has maybe like an early morning feel to it, or even I don't know, maybe even after like the sun has set. And then there's I actually think it's more of a more of like a an early morning feel. Um, where the light's gotten a little, a little bit warmer, you know, warmer than just the blues, but not so warm as like the sunset. It's sort of in between. Um, yeah, that was fun. I definitely, you know, the challenge for this week is going to be to actually do this process. And, you know, I think it can be really fun from, um, you know, from a color exploration standpoint, but also from a, um, from a mark making standpoint, you know, I, on my um, my art tip that I'm going to post today as well, you know, one of the things I'm going to talk about is, you know, is mark making when you're painting grasses, because that's, I actually find that to be, I think, one of the biggest challenges I'm seeing in critiques and even on the, the Facebook page is how people paint grasses and, um, sort of getting into, you know, or even, you know, just making too many marks versus getting, you know, getting the shape of it and then maybe just indicating, you know, a few individual marks. So I'm going to talk about that today. I'll post this first. That art tip will come later. I'm going to post two art tips today because I'm, I am one behind and then I will get, um, the critiques out today and then a poll for another zoom call uh, a zoom q a and i think that's i think that'll be it for today so hope you enjoyed this um it was fun for me and actually very fun that i wasn't trying to create sort of a a finished um a finished piece and it was really more about playing and exploring so uh, and, and one thing to pull from this process too that I should mention because I, I've seen this be a problem in a couple different artists paintings is what exists in the sky is what's reflected into the water, obviously. 
So if you do modify the color of the sky, be sure to modify the color of the water, otherwise it won't relate. I've seen that in a number of different pieces where, uh, let's say the sky is like a very, very cool blue, more like an, an ultramarine cobalt blue, but then the water is super, super turquoisey. And it's okay, especially if it's the ocean, because it's going to take more of a turquoise feel on, but there needs to be a little bit of that turquoise in the sky too. Otherwise, they just won't relate and it, it won't make sense. So um, hope you enjoyed that. Post it today. Happy painting, everyone.